everyone. I'm Linda Nickel, and my fellow moderator, Leslie Sessons, is here. So welcome to the Texas Women Photographers Circle, our monthly meeting. Every month, we invite a guest speaker to share their work, inspire us to try something new, and to build a stronger community of photographers. The schedule for upcoming presentations is on my website at lindanickel.com, as well as the links to previous sessions on YouTube. Tonight's guest is Colorado-based artist and photographer, Nancy Farney. Nancy is a nature and macro photographer whose work flowers caught my attention, and I'm certain that you'll agree that her images are beautiful works of art. In tonight's presentation, the deep beauty of flowers, Nancy will tell you a few of their secrets, starting with their curves, colors, light, and shadows, and she'll encourage you to slow down and look a little deeper at their beauty the next time you have an opportunity to photograph a garden. If you're on Instagram, please look for her at Farney Photography. Welcome to our program, Nancy. Thank you, Linda. So I'm happy to be here. I'm happy you're here. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> you know, okay, so um, I'll, I often get asked, you know, how do you find these people to speak to your different groups? And um, I participate, I'm a, I, I've helped over the last couple of years with um, a photography conference that's online. It's called um, Out of Chicago, and some of you may know it. A couple of the names in here I recognized from um, meeting them at that conference. But when the pandemic hit, they went online and it was crazy fabulous. and fabulous to have all these photographers in one place with so many different programs. And last year, they uh, said, you know, wouldn't it be kind of interesting if we had some attendees kind of do a presentation and they called it the attendees takeover. And so last year they had seven people come and speak and I'm telling you, they were all fantastic. And they repeated it this year and they selected, I think another seven people for the takeover and Nancy was one of them. And, um, I, you know, I, they give them seven minutes, seven minutes to do a presentation. And um, there were three people this in this last round that I'm like, seven minutes is not enough. And Nancy, you were one of those people that I'm like, okay, I'm going to get her to come and talk to my group. And I was trying to decide which, um, you know, uh, format we would do, whether it was a happiness hour or the women's photography circle. And I thought this would be such a great topic for the Facebook group. And um, so first of all, that that's how we, how I found you. And we literally just met about, I don't know, 20 minutes ago, yep. but um, thank you for taking me up on the invitation. Um, I skimmed your bio because I, you don't have a website, so you're going to work on that. But um, so it was really hard to find information about you. So I kind of just applied what I see in your work and so what did I miss what would you like to tell us you know how did you get into flowers you know uh, it's really bizarre um, my son and I took a trip to Seattle in 2012 okay. and one of the things we decided we needed to see was the Pike Marketplace um, and uh, there was a woman um, on one of the floors there and she was an artist an absolute artist with flower arranging and because I was going on this trip I would bought a camera to make sure I had a camera for the trip and her arrangements the way she put together particular flowers the way she put together colors um, it was incredible but I bought this camera kit that included um, a telephoto lens and it included a little thing that you screwed on the ends of your lens to kind of make, give you a telephoto shot. And I ended up spending an hour with her 
flower arrangements while my son visited the rest of the entire rest of the market. Um, I was there long enough that I'm pretty sure he went through it twice, saw everything that was there twice. He bought gifts for his wife, um, came back and checked on me. Um, and I was, I was hooked and I have been photographing flowers ever since. So that was in 2012. Mm -hmm. So we're definitely close to 10 years at this point. Um, I've tried other things. I go out and I shoot landscapes. I just came back last week um, from a um, photography workshop in Yellowknife, Canada, photographing the auroras. And we did the fall color of Yellowknife. And it was incredible, absolutely incredible. And after I'd been home for two days, I'm pulling dahlias back out of my garden and photographing them because I just always come back to flowers. Um, I also like to do some ICMs. I've been, I like photographing with infrared, um, but flowers, flowers are where my heart lies and I always come back to them. Well, there, there's a good reason. You're really, really good at them. Thank you. And Thank you I, much. Um, I, I don't know if you noticed, but I introduced you as an artist and a photographer because I can take photos of flowers, but they're just photos. As I've gone through your work, there, there it's more than just pictures. You're, you're creating some beautiful botanical fine art. And so, um, that's, that's what sets your work apart, um, from a lot of, um, floral photographers, I guess. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Um, Cause I'm excited. I, you know, when you did that presentation for seven minutes, it was like, is that it? Come on more. So <laughs> I, I was like, I'm going to give you well, 22 I'm slides. A <laughs> lot more, a lot more than seven minutes. All right. You know, go ahead and share your screen. So my presentation um, I went ahead and uh, I'm not good with titles. So I went ahead and said, let's talk about the deep beauty of flowers. Um, I love the macro photography. I love the photographing flowers. I love the ability to slow down, take my time. Um, it brings me a profound sense of peace to spend um, this amount of time just photographing flowers. One of my favorite quotes, let the beauty of what you love be what you do from Rumi. Um, this is African violet. And <clears throat> this photograph I love more for the bokeh in the background than the flower itself. Flowers speak to me, um, their color their texture, layer upon layer. This is a ranunculus. Um, friend of mine bought me a couple of them for my birthday three or four years ago. They didn't live once I got them planted in the ground, but they did really well when I was able to photograph them. But when you take your time and you slow down and you look at these, you say, oh my gosh, look at the texture and look at those curves. And that's what stands out to me more than anything else. In the case of this delphinium, in addition to that magnificent color, again, those textures, um, almost a transparency, transparency to the petals. Um, flower petals sparkle in the light and I love that. This was a field of tulips. Took I'd taken this quite some time ago when my son first got married they lived in Salt Lake City and at the temple in the spring they have garden upon garden of tulips blooming and what struck me here was the color um, I have taken this one and added a little bit of a painting filter in Photoshop just to give it more of a smoother, softer look. Flowers can be smooth. Flowers can be 
bright flowers can be like fireworks, the astral maria on the right here. What I love about them is that explosion that they tend to have. Um, I took the astral marias and I put a texture on the background of those. Um, the dahlia in the upper left is actually a double exposure done in camera. The tulip on the lower left um, took that at the temple. So it was like the ones before. And I did not like the photo when I first took it years ago. And I had to learn a whole lot of processing before I finally got back to this tulip and was able to create something I was happy with. Um, Eckhart Tolle, one of my absolute favorite authors, says the flower loves it when you give it attention. African violet. Um, I have fallen in love with African violets in the last year and I've lost count of how many plants I've bought. But this one is a deep purple with the white edges and those edges were all I wanted to focus on. Poppy, um, it was at Lowe's in the garden center and they had just gotten in poppies and the, they had a big tall rack and the rack was still wrapped in plastic and I am tearing open the plastic to get at the poppies to get them home. I do not do sharp focus corner to corner. I work at very wide open apertures, uh, mostly with lens baby lenses. I really wanted to capture that red, but I also wanted to capture that center. Delphinium, there's not a whole lot of blue flowers around, but the delphinium is one of them. And can we ever go wrong with water drops on a flower? ever. And a flower does not think of competition. It just blooms. I find that really inspiring and think, okay, this is how we need to live as well. My favorite techniques, uh, move in close so that I can highlight specific details. I use macro lenses. I use extension tubes. I use close-up filters sometimes all at the same time. Sometimes it is, how close can I get? Sometimes it is, what detail can I focus on? This was a sea lily in my friend's backyard. And I tried this sea lily from many angles and many um, attempts. And in the end decided all I want clear or all I want in focus is that center. Um, I had a workshop last spring in June in Madeline Island uh, with Ann Belmont, Charles Needle, Jackie Kramer, and Mike Motes. And it was a strictly macro uh, workshop. So it was, I was in my element. This is a dahlia. I grow dahlias. I think I am up to 13 this year, but my dahlias, my dahlia collection continues to grow. Um, this was backlit, so it was on my porch as the sun was setting. And uh, this was a case of how far can I push the exposure without going overexposed? And again, what did I choose to focus on? Just a couple of petals, some curves. I love that painted effect and I did not add any painting filters to this. This is how it came out of camera. Hydrangeas can be real difficult to choose. How do I want to display a hydrangea? And so again, using selective focus, picked a couple blossoms, a um, couple of blossoms more in bud stage. I love, love, love flower buds. I never go wrong with a rose. And this is a perfect example of curves and texture. This is one of my favorite parts of a rose is this texture right along here. Just this texture and then these curves, these petals that took this curve. Yellow dahlia. 
with Lens Baby's new Soft Focus 2 optic. What I especially loved were these little tiny points in here, this petal, this petal, this petal, and then convert it to black and white. I do a lot of conversions to black and white just to see if I like them. Black and white gives us a whole different view on those flowers. We still see those details, but somehow we see them a little sharper. Somehow we are forced to see them differently because the color is gone. Dahlia, okay, I'm drawing a blank. Um, Cafe Olay Dahlia. I was, yeah, <laughs> the only one I know is Cafe, Cafe Au Lait. Cafe Au Lait. They are among my favorites, and I just had gone blank there for a second. Yeah. And uh, I brought this one into the house, and the sun was just coming up in the morning, and it was coming through my kitchen window. And as I walked past the counter where it was sitting, and I saw that beautiful backlighting, highlighting that gorgeous color um i just had to capture a few petals i have four petals in focus because it was about the color it was about the softness it was about that light that was shining through i have a glass topped stove it is black it is perfect for lining up flowers and shooting their reflections. And you have to come down to their level to be able to catch that reflection. And this one, in this case, I was in very close with the Lens Baby Sweet 35. Um, that's why there's only this little bit of focus here and everything else falling away. And yet I made sure I had the reflection. Sunflower. My next door neighbors, my, uh, my house and my next door neighbors, we both live on an acre. And it's really dry where I live. So everything I grow it requires a lot of water. But these sunflowers do not. And my neighbor has planted almost the entire back half of his acre with sunflowers. Yeah. This is the Lens Baby Velvet 85 that I used on this one. Um, letting only those few petals be in focus, that little bit of um, reflection, some little bit of added light oh. right into the reflected part there. This is another rose uh, photographed on my stove and I let the entire rose go slightly out of focus. Um, so no, that isn't something going wrong on your computer screen. It is truly deliberately out of focus. Um, able to get an exceptional amount of softness that way. Never, ever, ever be afraid to play. This is all about play as far as I'm concerned. And we as adults need play as much as kids do. So this was my next door neighbor's rose on a piece of mylar. So the mylar is behind as well as underneath. And then I thought, okay, how does it look in black and white? So I added some texture, converted it to black and white, and then thought, mm, yeah, I need to bring that red color back in. I decided, all right, let's try it in warm tones. Let's try it in straight black and white. Let's try it in cool tones. And when you cannot decide what it is you like the best, make a triptych. When photographing flowers, it is important to photograph from all angles, from all sides, from up, down, underneath. This is purple Lysianthus from the side. Poppy from the back side, focusing on that color and that texture. I love texture. And then convert it to black and white if you're not sure. 
pair of roses from the side. I loved the color, but I love the black and white. And again, if you were to ask me, which is my favorite, couldn't tell you. Would depend on, would depend on the day, would depend on my mood, I guess. Sure, this was on my, in my backyard with the setting sun, um, with the setting sun shining through it and pushing the exposure as far as I could get it to go. Sometimes I'm looking for bright and cheerful. Sometimes I'm looking for dark and moody. Cosmos, love Cosmos. Um, there, I have so many of them blooming that right now it is just a sea of pink out there. If photographing flowers, don't forget the backside. Or I have a friend who says, I love it when you photograph flower butts. And this is a ranunculus. And what you're seeing here is nothing done to this. This was Lens Baby's soft focus optic. Again, that original one that I bought for $40 on eBay. Um, a ranunculus and it's a bud. Um, ranunculus, unfortunately for me, do not grow in my area. So it, occasionally the flower shops will get them and I grab them if I can. I love those layers. I love that texture. I think they're the most amazing flower. Let, let me interrupt you with a question sure. <clears throat> because sure. Um, you're going through and one after another. It's just like, oh, sorry. Oh, no, 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 no. They're just so beautiful. But Bridget has a question and I, I'm like, this is a great interruption. Okay. She, she says, and I completely back you up, Bridget, all the images are so beautiful, but can you talk a little bit about your composition decisions? Um, Bridget says, sometimes she struggles deciding if the flower should be completely in the frame or going out of the frame. Um, so yeah, let me back up a little bit maybe here. So I, when I'm working, I have live view on partly because of previous cataract surgery and my eyes have two different levels of focus. And so for me, it is easier to put my glasses on and work from live view. In this case, my composition was decided as much by the bokeh I was seeing in the background on my camera's screen as it was by the flower. So I was, as much as I loved this, I was also in love with all of this behind. Um, back up a couple more here. In the case of the African violets here, um, I loved this right here that was out of focus. I loved the color that was back here, which was actually a whole nother plant, I think. Um, and it was those stems again. So I, do not have steady hands at all and everything I do has to be done on a tripod um, I just can't work much of any other way I take the lens and I focus in I focus out I move the tripod forward I move the tripod back if it's something that I brought inside I will move it forward I will look move it back and we need to be able to look at the entire picture. How does the background look? Is there something there that I really, really like? Okay, in this particular case, this was a Lysianthus. And Lysianthus, when they first bloom, they're, they're on very thin stems and they come up like this. And then as they open, because the thin stems are so thin, they start to droop like this. And I saw a Spanish dancer's dress. That's exactly what I, <laughs> that's exactly what I see. Yeah. And that's what I saw. And, and I did add a little bit of painted filter just to, to give it more of a painted effect. 
But yes, I saw a dress. I saw the curves and the folds and the edge of the dress. So there's a, there's a lot of dance with flowers. This is a photograph that I could probably never repeat if I tried a hundred times. Um, I was at Out of Longwood in 2017 and it was our first day out. And again, I love Cosmos. And I know that I had the Lens Baby 56 on the camera. And right as I clicked the shutter, and again, I am not a handheld person, but I was handheld this day. We were just, it, we, it was our first day there and we were doing um, a scavenger hunt and we had to go out and meet, find all the instructors and meet them. And as I snapped the shutter, a gust of wind caught this. And that's where all of that color came from because the shutter was open and off went the flower. Don't forget about flowers that are past their prime because even flowers past their prime provide wonderful curls or the color changes. Um, the depth of the color in this, in this sunflower here, it was as it was dying. In um, this case, what fascinated me? You know, so you ask what fascinated me, what, did, what captured me in this picture was this curl. And that was mainly what I wanted to catch. Um, this is a canna. It was early, early in the morning. So I photographed it down low with the sun coming through the plants behind. What I loved about this one, in addition to the light coming through the petal here, was these buds back here and just the color. And then the transparency right here. And I think I did add just a touch of a painting filter to this one. Um, a lot of times what that Photoshop oil paint filter will do is, is uh, smooth out the flaws and give you a, just a smoother, softer flower. This is high key amaryllis, so sunlight behind it. Again, how do you, how do you choose? Um, start out here, far away, with all three amaryllis in focus, and continue to move in and move in and move in and move in. Add the extension tube. Add the close-up filter on the end. This probably had both, and probably again another fifteen shots from different angles. And this was my favorite at the widest aperture with as much exposure as I could push and not blow out the highlights and decide to only keep the stem and go for that abstract look. As the consciousness of human beings developed, flowers were most likely the first thing they came to value, which had no utilitarian purpose or was not linked in some way to survival. That line right there, the first thing that humans ever discovered with no link to survival and no utilitarian purpose. And yet we've been fascinated by them. Back of a geranium with the light coming through. And this is and again, I'm pushing that exposure as far as I can go. And it probably was seriously overexposed and I probably pulled the highlights back quite a bit in, in Photoshop. These were taken on a light pad and painting filters added to them. Again, those cosmos. The first recognition of beauty being one of the most significant events in the evolution of human consciousness. Geranium buds, I love them. I love them. And let as much of this one fall out of focus as I possibly could. I love that white edge. 
And once the flower is open, that white edge is gone. This might have been a Martha Washington geranium, not positive. My next door neighbor's white dahlias on a white background, pushing the exposure as far as I could go. I play a lot with focus. Um, my friend Ann Belmont is always saying when she is out photographing flowers, she is using every lens that is in her bag. She is using every aperture on those lenses. She is using every level of exposure that she can try. And she's photographing them from every angle she can get at. And when I'm working, those words are in my head. Okay, every lens that I want to use at multiple apertures until you find what you're happiest with. And in this case, what was it that I really wanted was this little bit of center. I liked the detail in the back. I liked the lines and the texture in these petals. And this one I knew I wanted to convert to black and white when I photographed it. Another African violet. I love the bokeh in this one. Um, this is the leaves of that plant. Here's a little bit of another blossom. This texture here, this curve here. Astromeria in a, um, just a bouquet that I bought at the grocery store that caught my eye because of the color. I bring my geraniums in, in the winter, and they live in my downstairs in front of my sliding glass door. This was taken in my kitchen late in the afternoon with golden hour sunlight shining through my back door. Um, this was probably taken in February. There was snow on the ground outside. And uh, the lens baby soft focus optic. I did nothing to this in post. It came out of camera like this. Same thing here, except I did add a little bit of a texture to these geranium buds. This one has a little bit of texture in the background. A couple of my favorites, white flowers and buds. I love white flowers, I love buds. Same white geranium, where in this case, the black and white really picks up detail. Same afternoon as I caught that other one, I caught this one. Uh, the geranium buds being backlit by that golden hour light coming into my kitchen. The light was absolutely spectacular that afternoon. And it was, it was February, it was 20 degrees outside. It takes away the color. It can give you black and white. It gives you a whole different effect. Um, my infrared camera that I had converted, I believe is at 630. And I'm still using lens baby lenses on the infrared camera. A whole different look. It's just an entirely different look. Astromeria, again, with that explosion kind of effect. A dahlia with an explosion kind of effect, also taken in infrared. Bought this dozen roses at the grocery store a couple of years ago because of this most perfect blossom. Um, this is like one of the most perfect roses I'd ever seen. So you're going to see this one again later here. Cosmos reminds me of um, a bridal bouquet and a bridal dress. Iris taken with the velvet 56. That flowers would become for us an expression and form of that which is most high, most sacred, and ultimately formless within ourselves. Again, the same rose. Um, it was sitting on the counter. The sun was shining through it early in the morning. So that is sunlight, giving it that translucency, giving it all that color. My next door neighbor's red, red dahlia. 
just a bunch of pink cosmos. Columbine. I have columbines in my backyard. And this particular one has bloomed three different times this year. It's out of character for them. Walked out into my backyard one day and my neighbor's sunflower was growing through my fence. So I photographed it saying hello. Pink orchid. I do grow orchids, so this is one of mine. Little bit of backlighting. So I think I put it up against the kitchen window. I think this one's called flamethrower. This was a neighbor's dahlia down the street. Again, the black and white conversion. Her name is Sincerity. Again, after a rain. Don't know her name, <laughs> loved her curves. <laughs> Cafe Olay, my favorite. I think Cafe that's it. I, I think Cafe Olay is probably the most perfect dahlia. It really is. It really is. It's those curves of those petals. And there's so many of them. Yeah. They're, they're okay. just incredible. Quote from Socrates, and I think I have two slides left. Beauty is a short-lived tyranny color versus black and white and this is the end yeah. okay so, yeah so your instagram and facebook um you, you can be found at farney photography and your email is farney.photography at gmail.com mm -hmm. that's perfect nancy uh, there was one question in here um that bridget had and she was curious about your infrared images um what shutter speed do you do you typically use for those those particular images <clears throat> um because i i would have been you know what i i don't know that i can even answer that question okay. um because infrared does require you to be working in live view and what i found especially and i don't know if anybody else has photographed with lens baby lenses and infrared you cannot trust the histogram right Right. Um, you can't even trust the histogram. Now, if I put my macro lens on in infrared, my 100 millimeter Canon macro or my 180 millimeter Canon macro, I can trust the histogram on the back in infrared, but I cannot with lens babies. And so what'll happen is I'm just turning down the shutter until literally on the histogram on the back, it is shoved up against the left side. Okay. Uh, the entire histogram is. Okay. So I'm sorry, I cannot answer that question. That's okay. Maybe that is just a little bit of a nudge for Bridget to go out and get an infrared camera and, and practice for herself. Nancy, I want to thank you for coming and talking to a thank room you. of strangers and sharing your work with us. And I know tonight was a little challenging. Okay. You, had, you, had, you, had, you had a little grandson and you, you had some distractions, but I'm glad that you were able to, to do this presentation for our group. Ladies, if you'd like to connect with Nancy, you can find her on Instagram at Farney Photography. And for next month, I want to thank you guys for joining us. And next month, which is next Thursday, not next Thursday, Thursday, November 3rd, um, our guest will be Karen Agner. She's a former National Geographic photo editor, a wildlife photographer, and a workshop leader. And she's going to be here to present stories from the wild and how to photograph them. So until next time, I hope that you find some inspiration and get some time with your camera. Mm -hmm.